Now, going to the Empire. Okay, they're just going to disappear on me like that. I get you, Empire. Now, let's go ahead and start off with their infantry. We're going to have Empire Spearmen with Shields. We're going to have three Flagellants. He's also going to have Empire Knights, along with two Knights of the Blazing Sun. From here, we're also going to be seeing Pistoliers. Looks like we're going to have four of them. So, Syphos, or sorry, Hadres, coming in here with quite a strong skirmish game. Uh, with those Pistoliers and the Heavy Cavalry to support them. It's a Parthian kind of army. Um, we're also going to be looking at an Amber Wizard. Amber Wizard's going to have the Manticore Summon. Uh, Power Stone, along with Flock of Doom. And then we also have Volkmar the Grim on top of his chariot. He is going to have Grand Soulfire, Grand Shield of Faith, the Grand Hammer of Sigmar, Banishment, as well as the Jade Griffin to give him that regeneration. Now that rounds out the Empire Army, so let's see what the Skaven have brought for us. Our red player, XMT Slade X. Now, what in the shit? I'm in love, I'm in love, I'm in love with this Skaven Army. There is little infantry, just a lot of machining gunnery. Alright, <laughs> we have rattling guns for the front line. One, two, three... And four, one of which will be the Teeth Breakers. We're also going to have Poison Wind Globadiers. One, two, and three of them. Now, behind them we have the sole unit of infantry. It is going to be Clan Bulk and Tail Slashers. We're then going to see two Rat Ogres. Two Wolf Rats with Poison. And then we're also, since everybody likes to be working... Oh, never mind. There's only... Wait a minute. Did I see a mortar or no? Okay, I lied. So, I just saw a fourth unit of Poison Wind Globadiers that I had missed initially. We're also going to see two more Wolf Rats with Poison, bringing it to a total of four. And then we just have the Hero Squad here, which is going to consist of a Plague Priest with Pestilent Birth and Vermintide. Also, don't forget about that Plague Rash. And then we're also going to see Deathmaster Snitch with the Deathmaster Sigil. And that rounds out the army, so let's see what happens. Did I not even say anything about the Hammer of the Witches? Because the Hammer of the Witches here too. ROR Great Cannon. God bless him. <laughs> Banishment coming in. Top of the Teeth Breakers, but now we have the Empire Infantry trying to close the gap. Spearmen with shields going up front. Flagellant starting to take some shots to the face. Over here, Rat Ogres getting charged by Empire Knights. Knights of the Blazing Sun charging into the back line. Wolf is taking it on the face, and it looks like they're going to go down in very short order. And there goes the route, and now the Knights of the Blazing Sun with the Pistoliers have their hand in the cookie jar of the back lines. Over here, two Pistoliers going to be charging in the Wolf Rats with Poison. Wolf Rats of Poison look like they were going to be routing immediately. Over here on the other flank, we're going to see Knights of the Blazing Sun coming forward. Going to get a charge into the Rattling Guns before the Rattling Guns are able to fire off. And uh, bada bing bada boom, looks like they're not even stopping there. They're just going to keep pushing through. Over here, we do have Flagellants closing the gap on top of these Rattling Guns. And uh, this all-ranged gamut looks like it may not be paying off for the Skaven, 
as Volkmar the Grim is terror routing the center of their line, if you can call it that. And, uh, you know, you have Deathmaster Snitch and the Plague Priest both routing at the moment. A summon coming in from the Empire here. That Amber Wizard, who I think I missed, Transformation Canon and Block of Doom. Throwing in the Manticore, which is going to finish off the Plague Priest and these Rat Ogres. And um, other than that, I'm just not seeing too much here that's going to work out. Ooh. Grand Soulfire coming in here on top of the Rat Ogres. And the Clan Bulk and Tell Slashers and Terror Routes are going to kick in immediately afterwards. And this Empire Army it seems to be gloriously cleansing the land of this Skaven Scourge, in my humble opinion. We do see that these Poison Wind Glob Deers, though, are. <laughs> there's still plenty of them that are healthy enough to uh, do a lot of damage, plenty of ammunition. And look at this Volkmar the Grim. Getting in combat with Deathmaster Snitch in range of the Poison Wing Globes. But a Manticore Summon coming in here. Looks like it may be able to shut him down. But Volkmar the Grim in a precarious situation. Yes. We have Poison Wing Globadiers on three sides of him. And two over here. And just look at the damage. They are not messing around. Manticore Summon coming in hot though. And it does look like Volkmar is going to be able to survive the Onslaught. We got Pistoliers and Empire Cavalry that... After clearing off the rest of the army, it looked like they're trying to now uh, come back to the center and help with the Poison Wind Globadiers. And uh, other than that, don't know what else they can do. So here comes a Banishment. Boom! Right on top of them. Nicely placed Banishment. Going to get about half damage, half health damage on top of them. Amber Wizard going to dive into melee as well. And that's going to be a GG to Hadres. Overcoming Slade X is quite risky, but I have to say... Sexy Skaven build there with just non-stop ranged action. Poison Wind Globes, a lot of them getting crazy value. <laughs> uh, rattling Guns, not so much. Uh, wolf Rats, also not so much. Yeah, I mean, just the Rat Ogres and the Wolf Rats without any infantry support are very, very squishy. And right from the get-go there, I mean, when you're dealing with the three Heavy Knights... With, supported by four pistoliers like these guys have no armor pistoliers are going to shoot them to pieces also on charge to charge knights of the blazing sun and empire knights just crush i mean crush wolf rats and even rat ogres too like the, with the charge bonus the empire knights can do very well against rat ogres they just can't stay in prolonged combat so add some more chaff here get some more meat on the bone of this army and i think it would work out a hell of a lot better but unfortunately um this game, it just didn't really work out in the end because I don't think the Skaven were able to control the distancing um, of the enemy army. And I guess spacing is the correct term. They weren't able to adequately space for their ranged units. And by space, I mean like, you know, send up some kind of chaff unit to pin a unit in place while you're rattling and shoot them down. And if you can't control the spacing in an army with this much range power, uh, you're not going to win 9 times out of 10. Because having the distancing, the screening, the spacing, like all of those things um, are really what make a ranged army deadly. And I just don't think this army had it. There wasn't a lot of defensive depth in the army. And by that I mean it was literally just a straight line of range units. Whereas if you have a lot of range units with different, you know, ranges of fire. And you stagger them and like have them kind of like in a deep formation. That often will help a lot more too. Because then when your front line gets engaged your middle line, your back line are still shooting their ammunition at the front line while they're trying to get through that first range unit, you know? So, in any case, hindsight's always 20-20. Let's throw up a score, uh, a point here for Hadres and go into round two and see what their picks are going to be. Things. So, here we are. We've got the Greenskins and the Tomb Kings. And we're going to go over the Greenskins first this time since we went over our blue player first in the beginning. Now... Let's go ahead and take a look at the deployment zone here and see what the Greenskins got cooking for their infantry line. So starting on their left flank and moving to the right, we have Goblins. We're going to have some Orc Biggins here. We're going to be seeing Savage Orc Biggins in the center. Orc Biggins once again and another unit of Savage Orc Biggins. Another unit of Orc Biggins. And then... To cap it all off, you guessed it, the second unit of goblins on that far flank. Now, in the center, night goblins, 
the eight peak loonies will be holding it down unbreakable ready to unleash their fanatics into the enemy lines and then going up to a higher view to make sure we don't miss anything it does look like we have three stone trolls as the core of the back line in the center of one of these stone trolls is going to be where are you at where are you at mr orc shaman he's literally in the troll i can't get him all right so he's gonna have ed butt and brain bursta along with power of the wah we're also going to have a night goblin shaman here night goblin shaman's going to be bringing the wand of jet and vindictive glare and then for the leader we have a night goblin war boss going to be on top of a night goblin squig hop or sorry a squig hopper and then we are going to be seeing the tormentor sword and nothing else now that rounds out the green skin army and for the Tomb Kings, oh, just kidding, there is a sneaky unit of Forest Goblin Spider Riders vanguarded out here behind the Tomb King lines. Now for the Tomb Kings, we have Skeleton Spearmen. Skeleton Warriors, Skeleton Warriors, Skeleton Warriors, Skeleton Warriors, Skeleton Warriors, and Skeleton Spearmen. We have a third Skeleton Spearmen holding down the center and the rear. We have two Skeleton Archers. And then on the left flank, we're going to have a heavy-hitting melee crew. Now, this melee crew will consist of a Tomb Prince on top of a horse with Guardian. We have a Necrotech with Restore, Vambrises of the Sun, and Stone Shaper. And then we have Setcher the Imperishable on top of his chariot with the Blessed Blade of Tra, Wrath of Tra, Naruz Incantation of Protection, and Jaff's Incantation of the Cursed Blade with My Will Be Done. And then we have the Sphinx of Usep, ROR Nectro Sphinx, charging into battle. Now, in the rear, we do have two carrion with two chevrons on each of them. And uh, we'll see how it breaks down from here, folks. All right, looks like we have our night goblins coming out. Savage Orc Biggins getting targeted <coughs> by the Skeleton Archers, but it does look like we have a... Is that an Ed Butt or a Brain Burst? Yeah, so a Brain Burster going down here, doing a lot of damage, and there goes Ed Butt. Doing some nice damage to these Skeleton Archers. And the frontline engagements have begun, and Skeleton Warriors getting clubbed to death by Savage Orc Biggins, but will the Savage Orc Biggins be able to club through them quickly enough, or will they be shot to pieces by the Skeleton Archers? Over here on the right flank engagements where the Tomb King heavy hitter core is, we have the Forest Goblin Spider Riders with Orc Biggins and two Stone Trolls. Um, looks like the Night Goblin War Boss was over here at first, but he's running away for now. More Stone Trolls and Mogram's Mangy Marauders coming over to support this engagement, but now we see one of the units of Stone Trolls is terror routing. Still has 10 models left, though. Oh! <laughs> Sphinx of Ustep playing with its uh, its victim there, tossing him up in the air and then slicing him in half. Stone Trolls, a fresh unit coming into the fight. Night Goblin War Boss, kind of keeping a respectful distance, but um, wouldn't mind seeing him getting in there, maybe trying to snipe out Necrotech, something along those lines, if he has a moment. You can always use the Tormentor Sword to pin the Necro Sphinx in place to keep it from attacking him. But right now, the Sphinx of Ustep against the Stone Trolls is doing God's work. It does magic damage, so they do resist that, but then it also does fire damage, which they have a weakness to. So, I would imagine a fairly even trade there. And now, it looks like the Tomb Kings on the left flank are just continuing to route everything the Greenskins throw at them. I mean, there go goes that Stone Troll. Looks like it's going to get routed off the map by Setra, and that's going to hurt, guys. Still nine whole models on top of these Trolls, and they're getting routed off the map right now, which is just something that it hurts to see the poor green skins over here these trolls getting routed um and then checking across the rest of the battlefield let's see what's happening for the green scenes it looks like their infantry engagements they have one overall um big guns just really stacking up well against all this uh skeleton infantry over here four skeleton spider riders looking to get on top of the skeleton archers and uh i don't think the green skins are out of this just yet you know got to keep in mind they still have what full health unit of biggins full health unit of savage orc biggins they still have the night goblin war boss they still have the night goblin shaman 
Um, they still have the Orc Shaman. Uh, so, you know, this battle's definitely Tomb King favorite at this point because they've been able to just demolish the trolls so convincingly. But uh, do not count out the Greenskins just yet. My daughter wants to come into the office and join the Warhammer fun, guys. Over here, Night Goblin War Boss. Looks like he was going to chase down the Necrotech, but now uh, we'll see Necrotech and Cetri the Imperishable coming in to attack him. Tormentor Sword going down, pinning both Cetra and the Necrotech in place. Oh, there goes the Wrath of Tra decimating so many Night Goblins. But the Night Goblin War Boss staying on top of him. Thank you so much for the kisses. My doctor is being a sweetie and giving me kisses. But oh no, Night Goblin War Boss taking a ton of damage. Savage Orc Biggins diving in to intercept though. Now, where is the Sphinx of Usap? Aha, there he is. He's coming back. And it's going to be bad news bears when he does. The green skins not going to have a good time when the terror causing unit comes in here. Does Cetra on the chariot cause terror? No, he does not. Night Goblin Warboss trying to get back in combat. Sphinx of Usep is coming at him, though. He's going to turn, array, turn around and run the other way. Ooh, Wrath of Tra going in there. Going to hit the Necrotech, do some nice damage. And the Night Goblin Warboss does such death maneuvering. And I apologize, guys. That's, yeah, I'm apparently... My daughter really needs to watch Warhammer. And it's just going to break down my office door. <laughs> God, it's so violent. All right, Terror is just proving to be too tough right now. Sphinx of Usep is still just untouched, guys. Necrotect continuing to heal it up. Um, and I shouldn't say untouched. He's taking damage, but he's healed it up. And um, the green skins look like just the leadership is not going to hold together long enough. And well, there you have it, guys. Hydre is on a roll on in very good form there. Just showing the strengths of his play and his army builds and just like executing them very well um really enjoyed both of those games from both players the second game i would argue a lot closer than the first game but um you know just the sphinx of usap really mvp there to me <clears throat> didn't pay for itself surprisingly enough but the terror routes are invaluable and it was also just like wrecking stone trolls and once the stone trolls were lost and routed off the field Greenskins just had an uphill battle from there, so no shame in that defeat. I think it was just uh, very well played to Hadres in spite of a, a strong display here from Slade X. And I liked his army too, kind of the opposite of the last time. He had a whole full ranged army, and then this one, besides Mogram's main two marauders, a full melee army. So interesting builds from Slade X here. Always happy to see him in the tournaments and hope to see him again soon. And a congrats to Hadres for winning that in a 2-0 clean victory.